Ivan Ackerman, Ukraine, the reigning and defending WBO Super Featherweight Champion of the World, Vasil Hightech Lomachenko. From Osaka, Japan, Masayoshi Nakatani. Wins a matchup like this. What if, as was the case last week in Ward and Kobe? Better part of Valor and stop the fight to limit the damage that is done to their fighter in round eight. Lomachenko landed 48 of 106 punches. The 106 is high number for the fight. Rodriguez landed four, count them, four of 32 punches. The Lomachenko, 30 of 67 power shots among those 106 that he threw. And what's instructive about those 32 punches, the number of punches thrown by Rodriguez has What a couple down. of right hooks. What a couple of right hooks Three. there. And Rodriguez is down for the Five, second time. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that was a conscious process for Rodriguez. He chose at his corner. And I'm wondering whether his trainer or someone in his corner waved his arms and just said, don't bother. And he kind of nodded. It was almost like Eric Morales after the last knockdown against Manny Pacquiao in their third fight when Morales just sort of nodded to his father in his corner and said, there's no point. Uh, <laughs> yeah. This looked like very much the same thing. And given the effort by uh, Rodriguez in this fight, it's hard to fault him because he did, he kept taking what Lomachenko was giving up. This may tell us, we may get a, uh, we get a chance to see on the inside that the, the variety of work by Lomachenko, which is extraordinary. You know, he has literally every punch in the arsenal. And he continues to work him over. And uh, we may get a look at the corner as well during this uh, barrage of punches as he goes down to one knee. He sweeps the right hand for one hard hook, and then he fires it straight down the middle, almost the same arc as a jab, to ultimately knock him down. When he had his opponent hurt, he finished him and got him out of there and didn't waste any time. Oh! Oh! Right there. What a huge right hand from Felix Three, Verdejo four, from long five, range! Six, seven, eight, you okay? We were just saying the first it? round explosive <laughs> power he showed us. Let's see if he jumps Watch on him. Oh, sweeping shots. Verdejo on the attack, standing right in the pocket. Nakatani swinging with him. Left hook comes in from Verdejo. That right hand just missed. Just missed Nakatani's chin. Nakatani is right there in the pocket against him and jabbing back now. He was just floored moments ago. That's Nakatani's game. And that's a fighter mentality. Nakatani got a lot of heart. You know, he's very courageous in the ring. He showed that versus Lopez. I knew he was going to come out. He took that punch well. That just shows you that he's in very good conditioning. Verdejo's doing the right thing right now. He landed a big shot. He tested Nakatani to see if he was ready to go. He wasn't, Ooh. and he's going back to boxing right now. Good move for Verdejo. Nakatani's landing right hand right over the top on the, the left side of Verdejo. I don't like that shot. It's landing... High on the head if he just gets it down on the chin. Here's the knockdown scored by Listen Verdejo. Me, I don't know how he got up from this right hand, landed full extension. All the weight behind that right hand from Verdejo. Look at the jab. He got him looking at the jab and then boom, right on the chin. And down goes Nakatani. That's one of Verdejo's favorite shots is the one-two. Quick step in, landed on the chin, and I'm right there with you. I don't know how Nakatani got up, recovered, and actually tried to finish the round strong. And the mistake that Nakatani made was he stepped straight back, had his hands wide open, created a lane for that right hand of Verdejo. You never know how somebody is going to react. That was the first time in Nakatani's career he has ever been knocked down. Again, the big right hand from Verdejo. And Nakatani responded well. He settled in. He, you know, Verdejo is countering him very well. He's countering on both sides. He's stepping and slipping inside his jab and going down to the body and coming with left hooks. And then he's countering over the top of right hands. Nakatani's getting hit with shots. And he doesn't realize why he's getting hit, hit with shots. It's not his game to think on the fly and make adjustments. So he's gun shy right now.
Check this shot out. Verdejo knew he was going to shoot that jab from a little bit too close. Did you see the transition? You see how he shifted his weight from the front foot to the back foot and loaded up with his right hand. And this one, he went low and then he came up high. And you see Nakatani got some experience. He rolled a little bit to take some of the steam off that right hand of Verdejo. You'll notice the 10-8 round on Andre's card. Of course, the knockdown scored in round number one. Felix Verdejo, who was the blue chipper, was the five-star prospect in the sport, the 2012 Olympian. He was thought of as the next great Puerto Rican fighter. And then the motorcycle accident, the TKO loss at MSG. But he is so focused, so determined, new trainer, new attitude. And coming out here to Vegas to get in his training and to get in high quality sparring yeah it's called sacrifice young fighters out there you will not and cannot get to the top and stay there oh there it is there it is nakatani Four, was coming in five, verdejo six, met him seven. with power again hey, you okay walk to me here comes the same five. shot and still the whole back half of this fourth round to deal with it in his career until tonight we are starting round five he's already been down twice this is what happened in the fourth round against Verdejo it's another pool counter right there you see the half step back you see the shift in weight he put shift the leg from the front foot to the back foot there it is boom loads up with a right hand Nakatani falls right into it double impact to call for uh, uh, an arbitration but the, if, if there is a fight it almost certainly will be in the Middle East stop Dallas. stop 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 so that is the talk. An undisputed heavyweight championship fight in the Middle East between Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua come 2021. Guys, Verdejo is buzzed by a right hand that he got hit with about Oh, and there's a left hand ago. that comes in. He's on shaky legs right now. He Stop. is on shaky legs, but you see him Stop. coming right back. You see that heart, that will of Verdejo right now. The biggest I've seen. And some time from him. Five minutes in total remaining in this fight. A fight in which Verdejo scored two knockdowns in the first four rounds. But then in the seventh round, things changed. Nakatani with a one-two with a thunderous right hand. And since then, Verdejo has been unstable, if not valiant, game and fiery. They have traded, but Nakatani has gotten by far the best of it in the last three rounds. Oh, and he's hurt. He sends him back. Nakatani is damaged for Dejo, and he doesn't look good at all. Six, seven, eight. Can I see you? He's in bad shape. He is in real bad shape. Could it be a comeback win for Nakatani? He floors him. He did it. Masayoshi Nakatani. Let's give you two looks. See Nakatani just, that was a jab. Wow. That's a jab that landed right on the chin against a fighter who was already hurt and on shaky leg, right there. That's just as powerful as a right hand landing in that same spot right there. And you see the reaction from Verdejo. That's not, he's not acting, that's real. And then you see Nakatani just following up. He knew he had his man hurt, landing a, clip, a glancing shot right on top of the head, but, but it was right on the arm. It was really the jab that did it again. It was the jab, but he was already initially hurt from the jab before the head. On foreign soil as Anthony Crawler embarks on this so-called Mission Impossible. How does he go about it? He's been sparring with Southpaws like Frankie Gavin and Jazza Dickens. He's had it tough in camp. But this is levels above. This is one of the great fighters of the last 10, 20 years in Lomachenko, who just seems to be getting stronger and better. And he wants more. Yeah, he does, Adam. He's improving all the time, Lomachenko. Which is a problem for Corolla, but corolla has got to expect the unexpected here. He's got to not get frustrated. You know, he's got to try different things out. He's got to have a game A, a game B, a game C. And I'm sure Joe Gallagher, who's a great tactician, would have worked on all these sort of things. And, um, yep, he's just got to see how he goes. He's got to go out there and enjoy this. 
Yeah, he's got an, an extremely tough task, but I think one of the keys would be to try and land some body shots. We've seen how good of a body punch a crawler is to try and slow Lomachenko down, but it's just trying to trying to land shots when Lomachenko's static. But he, you know, he moves round you. He's got angles in abundance, and he's a great fighter. And uh, Already springing in and out, beautiful footwork, Lomachenko, and he judges distance so perfectly, faints a great deal as well, and surprises you like a cat from all angles. The reflexes, terrific, Crawler with that high guard, and knows he's going to have embarrassing moments in there, but they have worked on that through camp, and I think it's a matter of getting through the first three or four rounds, and trying to utilize some of those body shots and if anyone in any way he could put some sort of pressure on Lomachenko because Salido did show the way that if you can out hustle him and smother him a bit like maybe Castillo did with Mayweather you know and just take the fight to him it's whether Crawler's physically strong enough and whether he punches hard enough yeah not really Crawler's style unfortunately Crawler likes to move around the ring circulating around the perimeter of the ring picking shots like that the shots through the middle I think for Crawler I think his biggest opportunity here is Darren hit the nail on the head he needs to switch the attacks to the body and try and slow the attacks of Lomachenko down because you're right Adam the timing is impeccable from Lomachenko the way he moves his feet come a little bit more now Joe Gallagher guiding Anthony Crawler through. He's a good man to have in the corner, isn't he? And he knows Anthony so well. Yeah, he certainly is. And he broke that down beautifully, if I'm honest. The, 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 the um, information that he was trying to try and work his way back to the centre of the ring. Yeah, the problem you got for Crawler is that Lomachenko is functioning him into each corner. He's using that footwork and now he's starting to unload a, with the clusters of punches and he's in trouble here, Crawler. Big shots, left hook really troubled him. Anthony Crawler and the referees are already having a close look. Back end of the third, he's going to have to throw something back. He can't. And he's giving him a count. The referee. A standing count. What's going on? Lomachenko thought it was all over. And the referee, Jack Rice, gave him a standing count. Well, all a little bit confusing in there, and the referees give him a lifeline there, giving him a standing count. I think everyone thought it was over. Well, he's saying the rope stopped him from going down, but it looked to me there were unanswered punches, and it looked like a stoppage, and certainly that's what Lomachenko believed. Absolutely, he jumped on the corner, celebrating there. Two members of the security, I think, jumped in the ring, but that was crazy. At first, I thought he'd given a standing count. Strange scenes. He's saying the ropes kept Crawler up. It'll be fascinating looking back because there were so many shots that went in there. It looked the timing to finish the fight, and Lomachenko was certainly beginning the celebrations prematurely. Referee Jack Rice has let it go on, but Crawler was in massive trouble. Yeah, he was in terrible trouble there. Let's take a look at the action now. We see Crawley using the ropes, bouncing off the ropes, but the shots were getting through. They were going round the gloves. And the problem you've got is, if there's unanswered punches coming, the referee has got to stop it. Did the ropes keep him up? It seemed that way. It didn't see him touch down. It's just strange. Strange from the referee there. But the only chance or hope that crawler has got now is that Lomachenko had punched himself out but with someone of the... The fitness, the speed, and, and the experience of Lomachenko, I doubt that's the case. And he's come out all guns firing, all guns blazing in this round again. Oh, it's all too much, this, for Anthony Crawler. He's brave, he's defiant, as we knew he would be. But his eye, as well, is reddened. And the blistering array of Loma's arsenal is on full display. And a body shot as well here, and the referee might have to make a more serious decision, and that is to stop the fight, or the corner, but Crawler is going to go out fighting, and he can't take it anymore. Down he goes, inside the first minute of the fourth, that is definitively the end of the fight. And that round, he'd come out in the fourth round, obviously Joe Gallagher's going to let him out, he, he had a, a game plan to let... 
Lomachenko come in and try and counter punch him with a hook, but that was unnecessary to go into that fourth round. I think the fight should have been stopped, and it was that was bad to see that the crawler took that punishment, and that was a bad knockout, and he still looks unsteady sitting on that stool now. Well, the right hand to the temple and the power there. People are saying he can't punch much, Lomachenko. Oh, wow, he is absolutely brilliant. He really is, and I'm sure Anthony... The first and most important thing is that he recovers and recovers well because that was a nasty finish, but I'm sure he will be the first. The count was all about at the end of the round and I, I have no idea why he was counting when Crawler went down then. You know, you could see he was, he was gone, you know, it was a bad knockdown, his face is on the floor, the ref starts counting, you know, the referees are in there to protect the boxer. And, Okay, so should, first question, should the referee have stopped it in the previous round?